Welcome to the Image Site Map Screencast. Alright, here we are. We've installed the app. And what we're looking at here is a shop that's had the app installed for some time. So we get a nice kind of overview of the historical data. So keep that in mind while we're reviewing all this that your dashboard when you install the app will look a little bit more sparse and you can see that this specific shop um, has had a pretty massive increase in indexing so going from you know around zero percent indexed up to near 100 percent uh, over a matter of some months so not all shops do this i know specifically this shop had a lot of work done to it for optimization and testing and double checking uh, what was happening with the indexing so you know this was a very very targeted kind of project in the sense that the developer really really focused specifically on indexing from the start and we'll start out right at the top of the page so we have a big graph that shows the historical indexing over time um, you know it'll show the total submitted total indexed and the associated percentage and then when we move down the page, we have indexing percentage by type. So we have all images in aggregate. We have product images, blog images, page images. And we have the total amount of URLs that were submitted to Google. So images associated with those URLs. We show the average image height of the images submitted, uh, file name similarity calculation, what we call blackouts. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. We show the last time we submitted to Google on your behalf and we show the last time that we got an event saying that your catalog was updated. And then towards the bottom of the page, there's some articles that I would really recommend that you read. Um, there's four of them and they kind of go from the inception of building this app and what I've learned over time. And there's a lot of good things to think about in there. So if you are having problems with your indexing, please, please read every single article. Uh, send them to your developers. There's some technical stuff in there as well. And then here on this page, we show the average image height of all the images that are indexed. And then, you know, that's really a way for you to understand what's going from your code on your page to Google. So if you're submitting an image that's 200 by 200 pixels, um, instead of something like 900 by 900. Uh, Google might not like that. And that's just a simple example of why you might want to use that data in the future. And moving down the page here, you can see that we do a file name similarity analysis across all of your product images. And what we want to see here is a really close relationship between the product handle, which is like the ending of the URL, and between the file image names on the page. And so Google sees that close relationship and they say, oh, hey, hmm, we think that these images are quite related to this page, uh, at least from a metadata perspective. So ideally that will result in better indexing. So, you know, if you have file names like IMG 7000 versus, you know, black hooded sweatshirt, size small with XYZ graphic, you know, automatically you can see that you've gone from almost no metadata whatsoever about that image to a whole bunch of, you know, relevant metadata right inside of the file name. And then here we move on to what we call blackouts, which are pages for which it seems there are no images that are indexed by Google. And, uh, you know, you can see in the case of this shop, they don't have any blackouts, which is really great, um, but they're a really good indicator of how broad your indexing is. Um, not so much how deep it is, but how broad it is. So, you know, for a shop that has many, many blackout pages, uh, that's very bad. And, you know, that's a good indicator that people need to get in there, look at the code, see what's happening, look at the image quality, you know, all of the different things that I talk about in the articles that I referenced earlier. So those articles are you know, available and listed on the homepage. Uh, they're available on my Medium page, which is, uh, I believe, medium at W-B-E-L-K, W-Belk. And uh, those are also emailed to you when you install the app. So you know, keep, keep those close because there's a lot, a lot of data over four articles. Um, and then you know, your problems 
are in there somewhere. You know, there's there's optimizations in there somewhere that will help you for sure. And now we're going to move to the next page. Um, this is more of like a kind of back end ish technical page. So um, here we can specify which images we want to submit to Google. So there may be a category of images that we don't want to submit. Um, and this is the first thing you do when you install the app. So that's actually the first prompt that you will see. Um, you know, obviously we recommend that everyone submit all their images, but you may have a good reason not to. So that's fine. That's why we set it up that way. And then next we see, this is what we use to verify your site. So this allows us to submit data to Google on your behalf and pull that data as well. So this is a, just a simple meta verification tag. Um, we insert this automatically into your layout slash theme dot liquid file. Um, and then we put it here as well, just so you have it because you know, a lot of people will run some sort of version control on their code base, like with Git, um, they may have some automated deployment infrastructure. So it's good to just take that, put it into your theme. And this is also a really easy way for you to revoke our access. So if you remove that, um, that meta tag, then we lose our access to submit on your behalf. So it's really easy. Uninstall, remove the, the meta tag and you're done. And next we see product page error check. And what that is, is we run a check on the first product in your catalog every 21 days looking for browser errors. So we want to see if there are any hardcore code errors on the page, um, any sort of response errors, failed requests, those sorts of things. And these are things that can really negatively affect your SEO across the board, depending on how problematic the error is. Because, you know, when the Google scraper gets to your page, sometimes there are JavaScript errors that may trigger something and Google will look at that and say, oh, I can't trust this page. So, you know, a good example would be too many um, insecure requests. So you're requesting, you know, either a JavaScript file or something like that that Google thinks is insecure because you're not including, you know, HTTPS in front of the request. So that's a really simple example where Google might see five of those and say, hey, we don't trust this site. We don't even want to index the content here because there may be a deeper issue here, you know, and this could especially be problematic if you're requesting, you know, Java, external JavaScript files that are not secure. Um, you know, that doesn't happen very much anymore, but that's a really good example of, of if you have code errors uh, in the console inside of the browser, you know, Google can definitely demote you and they can definitely, um, let's say they, they put together the pieces in their own, on their side and they say, we don't trust this site. We don't want to show their content because the user may click on this content and go to the site and the site may present a problem for the user from a security perspective. Um, like I said, that's rare, but you know, it's definitely, definitely something to keep track of. And the last feature of the screencast that we're going to look at is uh, after you become a paying customer, we provide you with the latest XML files that we submit to Google on your behalf. So you always can check them out, snoop around, you know, see what we're doing, see what data is going to Google, um, see how we're approaching the problem. Um, and that's always there for you. It's more of a technical thing or kind of, you know, if you're curious type of thing, but you know, that's the, that's the file that we submit, you know, at all times. And uh, we submit that every time you update your product catalog. So, you know, within, I would say anywhere between 30 seconds to 10 minutes, you know, that updated data on every single catalog change will be with Google so that every time they, sh they scrape your, your catalog, they'll have all of the most updated data. And that's a wrap. This screencast is over. Hopefully you haven't wasted nine minutes of your life and you installed the app. Uh, if you have any questions, just email us, reach out. No problem. We'll get back to you right away. Thanks.